Hello, beautiful soul. I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And welcome to your energy forecast for December 2021. So we're finishing out this year that felt like it would never end. <laughs> and Tiffany Harlick is here today to help us with the astrology for the month. Welcome, Tiffany. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, let me just tell everyone a little bit. There's a link below with all of Tiffany's information and links to the things that she does um, and the things that she offers. So we've got a couple different links, but I just want to tell you, Tiffany hails from Texas and she owns and runs Wise Skies Collective online. So you can check that out. She also has Spellbound Publishing and she has published a heck of a lot of books. So you can check out Spellbound Publishing to see all of her, her author work. She is of, a, I like to say, a Russian lineage. So I love this, Texas and Russian lineage. I love that mixture. And she has a lot of Scorpio energy, Scorpio sun, Scorpio moon, and Sagittarius rising. So we like to be open with that. And if you guys want to know, I'm so you can see how we're mixing here. I am Pisces sun, uh, Aries moon. Oh. <laughs> and um, my rising is Aquarius, so that's why I'm always interested in all the stuff that's coming up these days. So uh, join Tiffany in those places, and thank you, Tiffany, for joining us. I'm kind of excited to just honestly um, be finishing out this year. <laughs> You know? I, you're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, I'm with you. Everybody else is with you. There's not a single person watching that doesn't feel that way. I promise. I, the best thing that's happened, Tiffany, is this month um, I got finally got my dog. Yes. My little puppy. So I'll share him with you because you haven't met him yet. I'll share him with you when you go to shuffle the cards and do the tarot at the end. I'll bring Bodhi in. He was already named in a dream I had of him and Bodhi. Uh, I looked it up and it means enlightened one. So he's like a little enlightened furball. Oh, <laughs> so let's jump right in because I know that there's a lot going on in December. So let's jump oh right into the theme that you found for the month, the numerology, and then we'll look at the exact dates that people want to be aware of. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Um, the theme and my best advice is being here now. And yes, I snagged that <laughs> from uh, mentors before, but really guys, um, you know, when things get urgent when we have a sense of wanting to know the unknown so that we can control our futures. It, it takes us out of the present moment. And I think that the, the theme for December and being here now helps us remember just to stay present in this day, to do the next right thing today. Uh, I think that we're all going to need to be present because December looks really choppy, which I know you don't want to hear. So don't worry. I've got some positive dates for you. <laughs> choppy. Um, <laughs> What's choppy mean? Just real quick. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's just full of a lot of intense astrological weather. Okay. Uh, you know, and so we have to stay present, you know. Um, so being here now, staying present, however you want to word it, that's going to be the theme uh, that's going to help us stay centered during unknown times. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. And we're going to go through all of them. And that'll help you just get a sense of um, relaxation and calm around what is coming. I keep, Somebody. as you're talking, Tiffany, it's like, I want to keep, let's take a couple breaths. Cause I'm like, right. Breaths? I like want to start it already right here. Like just, okay. Yeah. Cause even as you talk about it, I'm like, Oh, a lot of choppy weather. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's not going to change. It's going to be better me being with it. So I really want to be here now with you with it. So I'm you do, you know, you want to have that sense of vitality and human life and awareness, right? Like it's, this is a good and fresh and energizing choppy. It can be, I'll say okay. it like that. Okay. Yes. And we always go for the can be's here because my tribe grabs for the best. So good. <laughs> that's my kind of people. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So the first day, guys, December 1st starts out with Neptune, one of the outer planets going direct in Pisces. Um, this is not a major shift. It, uh, the outer planets move slowly and Neptune is kind of sleepy, dreamy and Pisces is kind of sleepy, dreamy and it's very yoga meditation vibe. Um, and so just don't 
just don't just let yourself ease into December. That's all it is. You know, just don't overbook yourself on the first. Okay. Um, you don't have to map out all of the things, right? Like it's just, we're just easing into the month. Uh, if, if the month had a ruler, right, that would be yes. a great one to have, um, to have Neptune as this uh, overriding energy would be really graceful. Right. And that would help us remember that life is happening for us, not to us. You know, that we're actually in the flow. We're not on that riverbank. Right. So that's what's going on December 1st. Uh, right after that, we've got a new moon solar eclipse in 12 degrees of Sagittarius on December 4th. This is the second eclipse. Right. We will have just passed one on November 19th. Uh, where the, we had a, um, what did I just say? Solar, <laughs> a a partial eclipse in Taurus, right? Yeah. Yes. We'll have had one in, in Taurus. And so this is the second one in Sagittarius, right? And so uh, Sagittarius being the sign of the gypsy, the philosopher, the lawyer, the king, uh, the great expander of truths, you know? And so I feel like things are coming on earth, that things are coming into vision, things are coming into focus, depending on where 12 Sagittarius is affecting your chart. Um, you can see in the media, there's lots of um, eclipse moments happening, right? I don't need to list them all, right? You, I know that we, we don't like to watch the news, but surely you've heard of some things going on in the media that point to these um, big reveals, if you will, these eclipse big... Okay, so I need to stop you just for a second. For you, an eclipse moment is what? An eclipse for me personally? No, no. When you just use the word eclipse moment, we've been having oh, eclipse moments. Eclipse moments. Uh, this is, yeah, big news, uh, pivotal moments, things changing directions, um, some huge piece of evidence revealed, right? Like I just had a big eclipse moment this last new moon. Uh, leading into eclipse season with all of the ancestry work I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And I unearthed some information. All of this was happening in my 12th house of the hidden of the unknown. So mm -hmm. for me personally, it's like unknown information coming to surface. Now for me, this was good and interesting and juicy and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just depends on where these uh, eclipses are hitting you. So by the time it's in 12 degrees of Sagittarius, where is that in your chart, right? And so you would want to look uh, if you're if you're curious about how it's affecting you personally, it's a pivotal moment in that house where that eclipse is happening. It's a pivotal moment because the eclipses are so closely tied to the the nodes of the moon, um, and the nodes of the moon are in right now Gemini and Sagittarius, right? The nodes right. of the moon are, are always going backwards, right? Uh, and so they're they're not exactly retrograde, but they're always going backwards. Um, and the last time that we had the nodes in those signs was in the early 80s when we were having um, the first woman in space, when we were having, you know, and now you can see like there's a lot of space news going on right now with people going to Mars. There's, I even saw a, a story about a young guy in Russia who's from Mars, right? Like he's having all of these memories as a young kid uh, wow. with a past life. So there's like space stories. That's one theme, right? It's just yeah. the next horizon. Um, can I... There, can I just say that what, because um, when I did my yearly, um, my yearly report, my forecast for this year, I remember just being fascinated with the way, yeah, just watching the finishing up of our personal movement through the soul lessons of the notes, the Sagittarius dealing with old beliefs and everything. And it feels like this is a real kickstart. So I wanted to throw this out to see what you thought. This feels like a, like a last final before it changes. It changes in January or so of next year that yeah. of to really shift these old beliefs, the ones that have been shackling us in Sagittarius. That's how this solar eclipse feels to me. What do you think? Because we're also going to have the Gemini, of course, full moon at the end, which feels like a last chance to really secure the new, more open my mind, open my information to mm -hmm. not be just in the old beliefs of what other people tell me or whatever. So I was just wondering how that lands. Oh, totally. I, get, I mean, I full body chills for sure. Like that's exactly it. It's okay. old philosophies, old kingdoms, old uh, ways of thinking and operating. And so that can be very uncomfortable, right? Especially if you like how things were operating, you know? Um, you no, know, can I say something, Tiffany? Even when I don't, I've noticed something weird, and I wonder how this sits in your body. Is I've noticed that my body's holding all this, but it's holding my ancestors' cells and energy. You know what I mean? It's holding all this. So even if I don't like it at all, which has always been the weirdest thing to me, still letting it go is a grieving. Letting it go is hard on my mm -hmm. body level. Mm -hmm. Even if I like, if I don't like it, and I'm like good riddance, but I'm still like good riddance, and then I'm. 
I'm chained. Does that make sense? Right. I think that Pisces sun has a lot to do with that, you yeah. know, right? Like you're, you are embodying a lot of things for a lot of people, right? And not everybody has that journey, but for sure that makes sense for your chart, right? Um, and that, that willingness to process it on behalf of so many is part of your soul gift, you know, is part of what, yeah. <laughs> I'm a projector as well. I don't know if you know that, but so you just spoke perfectly to you intuitively must have known I was a, I'm a projector. So that's that's what I'm doing. But what I am trying to say is I think all of us, we forget when we're doing the spiritual work, the bodily part of ourselves never wants to change, even when it's apparent that we want to change. Like even when we want to change, it's still going to create an upset in our routine of of our body and beliefs and the way our mind even operates. And the body never likes that. So Right. And, you know, the. The eclipse season, this the first one in November was next to that fixed star Algol, Algol, mm -hmm. A L G O L, mm -hmm. and this is the beheading star. And so people like to really get into the um, mythology of Medusa and Athena and the you know warrior goddess with the skulls everywhere and killing people. You know, all it, like stacks of bodies. Like it can be very very dark the mythology. No but way. I like to look at it like sometimes you know what 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 would be good if you didn't let the mind run the show, right? Speaking of human design. Yes. So a beheading, right? The Scorpio can make a beheading positive, right? How about you? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, if we, if we lose our heads, we're just going to enjoy our bodies, okay? So let's move on because we have so many dates. I took you yeah. off track a little That's bit. Okay. That's okay. So that new moon eclipse is a big one. More will be revealed. Things are pivoting. We're walking through a doorway of fire and we're, we just got to keep walking. It's going to be okay. Um, mm -hmm. Doorway of fire, right? Sagittarius. Love I love that. I, yeah. I almost forget sometimes because I think of Aries and Leo so fiery and then Sagittarius got such a sweetness about it. I forget sometimes that fire in it. Yeah. It's like the fire that fuels the magic carpet ride. It's a different yes. kind of fire, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's good fire. So we're going to go through a good doorway of fire. Yes. Yeah. And so on that same day, the fourth, the fourth through the eighth, there's a, a, a difficult window that I want you to mark down as caution lights, as uh, safety precautions, because Mars is going to square Jupiter. Mercury is going to square Neptune. Um, when I first started taking astrology lessons, uh, I learned Mars square Jupiter the hard way. And I got a speeding ticket on the way to class. I was late. I was pissed at the cop, you know, the whole thing. And uh, it was my fault, of course, but I still was trying to get to class on time, which I should have left earlier, right? I was 20. But I get in and the teacher's talking about Jupiter and all the Jupiter transits and what happens when Mars squares Jupiter is that there's a sense of urgency, fast, go, 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 against square Jupiter, the law, right? Okay. So you can watch out for speeding tickets. You can watch out for... Especially um, if we're rushing, watch out for where the law might come in when we're trying to push and rush. And that leads me back to your beautiful theme of staying in the moment, being here now. Mm -hmm. Being yeah. here now, right? I like being as opposed to be, like being, like really presence. It. Full being. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, like you said, like rushing things, the law can get involved um, there. It, it, things can get out of hand really quickly. Uh, it's like wildfire. You know what I mean? It's like a spark, like a cigarette out the window leads to. Oh, okay. Counter. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. caution, slow in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're already accident prone, if you're the kind of person that like is like me and kind of nerdy at dinner and ooh, all of a sudden I'm choking <laughs> on my water. <laughs> I know there's many reasons you're my soul sister. Okay. So four through the eight, we got a caution light. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> so those types of things. Mercury is also squaring Neptune at that time. So things are confusing. Things aren't as they seem, right? So we're just going to ride the wave. Mm. And, and, maybe, and maybe watch the confusion of communication too with the Mercury, right? Exactly. There's, it's just confusing. And so whatever plans are made during that time, you can just guarantee that it ain't going to be that, you know? <laughs> okay. You guys make your comments if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please let me know. Um, in terms of confusion and dementia and um, things like this going on, I want to recommend lion's mane. If anybody is doing medicinal mushrooms, you can take those and that can help. Uh, clear up the neural pathways and passages. I don't rep for a company or anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I always have to say that too. It's just you like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it lines me. Yeah, it's it's a great one. It looks like a brain, right? Like so. That's how you can remember it. Oh, okay. Um, on the tenth and eleventh, I want you to circle these as the best days. We'll talk about them at the end. Um, the, <laughs> on the thirteenth, 
we've got, what do we have? We've got. <laughs> You're going to come back to the 10th and 11th. Tell us. Yeah, right. I'm going to come back so that we have some reason to keep Yay. going, right? Yes. Uh, little treasure at the end. Okay. On the, ten, on the 13th, we've got Mars entering Sag. Mercury is going to enter Capricorn. So if you think about Mars, again, that planet that's on fire, that has energy, that's fueling our passions, our ideas, our sometimes our um, motivations aren't even clear to us, but we have this sense of urgency about things. That's Mars in Sag. So what do we have a sense of urgency about? Uh, learning, you know, really understanding something, you know. So this is a great season to just go back to all those books you didn't read before and just go like watch all the shows or listen to all the podcasts, like fuel yourself through higher knowledge, learn a foreign language, right? Mercury will enter Capricorn that day as well. And so there's a shift um, from, from Sagittarius into Capricorn there. And that's really a preview for this Venus retrograde we're going to talk about. So Mercury and Capricorn, long-term plans, commitments, uh, thinking about the future, Capricorn has some alchemy to it, you know, so uh, some mystical opportunities so that you don't have to plan everything. You can leave it open a little bit for interpretation. But the idea here is that our uh, logic, our way of thinking is going to be a lot more concrete and less less ethereal. So we can tend to have blinders on. So that's another reason to be here now. So if you notice, I have blinders on, I need it my way or the highway. I don't like it your way. This isn't good for my experiment, my experience, you know, then just remember that Mercury and Capricorn is helping you uh, focus and you don't have to disregard everybody else's plan. You know what I mean? We can yeah. just. And, and where you said, is it true that where you said that, um, the Neptunian en energy was screw screwing things up with our thinking and our communication, that now's the time when we could, because Capricorn is more business, contractual, stuff like that. Now's the time, as long as we really are with it, um, we can make those contracts then and, and make and those I, commitments or not. I agree. And I think it's going to also be a I great mean, time. Now being, I'm already doing the now being in the present, like you said, now being that time you're talking about, which was which date? The, the 13th. 13th. Yeah. So the 13th, yeah, I think that's a great thing to bring up because this is also the time of year where if you didn't achieve some of your goals or if you didn't uh, get something done, Mercury and Capricorn is going to help you wrap it up, right? Uh, so for me, this was a year where I wanted to learn beekeeping and mushrooms, mycology for remediation. And so this is a great time for me to like focus, like, gosh, did I, did I finish all those mm -hmm. chapters I wanted to read, you know, and it can be simple like that. Okay. Um, so the 16th or 17th, the sun is going to semi-square Saturn and semi-sextile Pluto, say that, oh, and, no. then, uh, and Venus, right? And so this is another little like, oh, things aren't what they seem. We're just going to let you know that the astrology is still a little wonky. And then it leads into the 18th, of course, that full moon in 27 degrees of Gemini. Uh, the full moon in Gemini is the crazy making moon, right? <laughs> this <laughs> is why full moons have a bad name. <laughs> you know? um, I hadn't heard that before. I really hadn't, you know, but so uh -huh. what is that about? What's the crazy making in the Gemini? Well, Gemini, right, this is where we have a divided mind. This is the oh. twins. This is where things and, we can see. And it's full. Different. So it's a full and divided mind. Like it's energy. And, yeah, and, and you're second guessing yourself. And um, you're just, you're going back and forth. You're, you're kind of tired kicking. And so if you find yourself in your mind, Gemini, right, we're going to try to lean on that whole beheading star and be like, okay, where is my mind not helping me in this situation? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, mind. Thank you for the, that thought. That's really sweet. I know you're trying to look out for me. I'm going to let go of that thought for now and try to stay present with what is, okay. right? Uh, the full moon ends things, right? And so this is another good time to end what? Stuff in Gemini. Uh, is there a piece of communication that you need to get out and be done with for the year? Is it the last newsletter that you send? Is it, um, you know what I mean? Is there a book that you've been writing and this is the time to finish it up? Um, it's stuff like this. So um, yeah, it can be, so it's a crazy making moon, but really the, the advice is really to stop the crazy, you know, stop the crazy train. And so what area of life is just draining you? What area of life uh, is not filling your cup? Can you let go of it? Can you just decide to let go of it today? You don't have to let go of it forever, you know? Yeah. Uh, so there's that. We've got on the 19th, Chiron is going to go direct in Aries. And then Venus retrogrades in Capricorn, which I know is a hot topic that we want to cover. 
Venus, you know, guys, is the goddess of love and money, of, of worth, of, of self-worth, of uh, luxury, of uh, that feeling of wealth, right? So when you close your eyes and you connect to your tribes of light, when your chakras are lit up, when you're in um, that holy place, you know, when you're in your own sacred sanctuary, to me, what it feels like is like pillars of selenite surrounding me that are just these angelic beings. You know what I mean? And so yeah. this is a, this is a return to love, right? Like a return to that, that holy place of infinite wisdom, of uh, unconditional love where all things are possible. Um, this is an invocation to return home. And in so doing, you're going to pass familiar souls on the way, right? So Venus retrograde will bring up old flames, yeah, uh, old lovers, right? Yes. It's such a, I also saw warmth in the selenite. I had like the selenite was white and then I had, there was like warmth there. And it's just like, really love this, the goddess energy, like the highest yeah. true goddess energy, just like right. the queen slash goddess energy yes. of wisdom and heart. Yes. It feels good when you did that. You oh, thank you. <laughs> Me too. And that's why I like to go there and to just remind you that you can play in that field, right? And so as you're returning back to yourself, as you're returning to that love, this, the source energy, which is here, it's not out there, you're going to pass some old familiar souls and you're going to go through some old karmic um, patterns around money, right? Mm -hmm. And so it could be like, ah, I thought I like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I thought you said it, I was like, ah. <laughs> well, it's like, okay, so for me, what did, like the last time I had, I had a melanoma removed on my arm and I thought I had paid everything off and I like still get a bill for the next thing. I'm like, haven't I, aren't we done here? <laughs> you know? It's gone. It's gone. The bill should be gone too. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be that oh kind of, gosh, I get you know? it. It can be like, oh, I, we, we didn't put as much taxes in as we should have. There can be some financial confusion. And yeah. so if you're buying a business, if you're getting married, if you're doing these contractual things, yeah. um, can you just really go really slow with it? Venus retrograde, one of my best astrologer friends got married during a Venus retrograde. And she said, do you think I'm crazy? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it's both of your second marriages. You're coming back around, you know? And so there are instances where it makes sense. Yeah, um, why, why do people make retrograde such a bugaboo? I don't want to get you off topic, but I yeah. just like sometimes, you know, retrograde is just the, the, the our, is our soul's opportunity. That's mm -hmm. the way I like to put it and think mm -hmm. of it. It's the, it's where we really get to consciously look at stuff. And like you said, back around. Yeah. So, right. A good thing. Well, we, well, if we couldn't do that, what if, if I had to go forth and could never look back at what I've, I just imagine the things I wouldn't learn or wouldn't know, you know, wouldn't feel. And with awareness, you know, it's, it's our, it's our karma that we planted. It's, we're seeing yeah. what these yeah. people we're seeing the return of our own, like, yeah. And we get, and we actually usually get another chance then that's about, that's what's so amazing about these fast times that we're having now. Yeah. So, okay. So that's the 19th and it will, Venus will be retrograding Capricorn through like mid January. So just okay. know that there's right. lots of room. The, on the 21st, the sun will enter Capricorn. So make sure that you say happy birthday to your Capricorn friends. Um, the Saturn will square Uranus retrograde on the 24th. So this is the third and final gong crash. This is something that we're seeing now that we're feeling all month long and then we'll release. Yeah. So we're already feeling the tension. Is that what you're saying? Oh, like that sure. tension is already related to that, that we've been feeling all year with these three yes. squarings, right? Yes. And because this is the final one, I think it's going to be the most intense. It's happening uh, Christmas Eve. And okay. so uh, it, here in Texas, of course, in February, we had the big ice storm. We lost our power grid in June. And the second one, our power grid again went wonky and nobody had air conditioning. And so this third and final one, what I'm seeing here locally is that you can't, you can't get a generator. Like people are on it right oh, now. Okay. They don't even know the astrology. You yeah, know but what they're I mean? just on it because first they, they had two problems already. Yeah. The biggest problems you can have in Texas, you know, if you're an on-grid household, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, what do you do in that situation? Uh, you prepare as best you can. Uh, what what items would be yeah, really what does that look like? I mean, for me, it's like a lot of peanut butter, you know, because I don't eat meat, right? So like, I don't need to <laughs> a lot of peanut. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a great piece. A lot. It is. It's an easy one. It's tasty. <laughs> yeah, peanut butter. Is better, you know. Okay. I mean, 
I don't want to live on it for 10 years, but it's, those are what's shelf stable, right? Like, do you, are you into oat milk or a veggie broth that can be in those like nice cartons? Can you just have some extra of that? Do you know, are your batteries in your flashlight? Is going to be around, you think things shutting down, like that kind of thing? Is there any other type of meaning possibility to it? Or is it going to, again, be probably more things shut down, things, you know, that kind of thing? Well, Saturn is is forcing control mm -hmm. and Uranus is blowing things up. I almost perfectly on. put, yeah. <laughs> but so they're they cannot not combust. Something okay. is breaking down. You could say freedom is being broken down because Saturn's in Aquarius and we like that sense of freedom. Uh, you could say that the financial and food system is being broken down because Uranus is in Taurus, mm -hmm. food and money. Um, you could say that the the supply chain is being broken down for those reasons. Um, you could say that. So what do you do with your money in this situation? Yeah. You stay diverse. You cannot pigeonhole yourself when we don't know what it is. You know, there, if if some astrologer tells you exactly what's going to happen, I would. I mean, nobody knows. You know, uh, <laughs> it's it's Uranus. Come on, right. right? But and our own thoughts are uniting to create something. So let's not be scared about it. Right. Let's, let's be. Yeah. Can I tell you my dreamy Piscean version? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just saying, this is the kind of thing I always long for. I always long that if there's three meetings, because I see it as Saturn being the big, the old, like grandpa and a Uranus, Uranus or Uranus being the young grandson. That's like, ah, oh, grandpa. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're like, or even father, son, if there was a lot of age difference and they're just kind of duking out, duking out and they duke it out explosion in the first one, they duke it out. Ex uh, but maybe a little less in the second one, explosion still. And then the third one, they kind of find, almost find a way, you know what I mean? Like they're already starting now to find a way to meet because they have to, you know? And uh, I know that's probably not true, you guys, so don't listen to me on this one. But that's my Pisces way. And I'm sort of like, third time around, can't we find a little bit of of dovetail, but probably not. <laughs> or, or can we live and let live? Um, yeah. You know, this is a nice segue into yeah. a little sneak peek of 2022. Uh, because what you're talking about is the karmic um, relationship of the father son cycle between Saturn and Uranus, right? Yep. So that is also going to continue uh, some into 2022. And so it's like, you know, it's just kind of human nature, what has to happen, you've got a, a parent and the kid has to rebel against that no matter what it is. Like That's the way of the future, right? That's the way of the future. And yet a kid like I always say the kids got without the wisdom of the parent. So there, there has to be the kid, always the new is stronger. It's a stronger energy. And there's a reason for that because we keep developing, but you still need some of the wisdom of the older, or we get speeding tickets and stuff. If we run around in the young energy, right? <laughs> Me right. too. Right. So right. I don't know, but now that it's going on this year, I have a feeling if it's going into next year a lot, then we're probably looking at a pretty big crash, like you said, in uh, this month. So just be prepared is what we're telling everyone. Right. Christmas Eve, <laughs> don't, don't get too soft and eggnoggy on your christmas eve like be ready right Don't overspend. you know yeah. that would be foolish right stay diverse right stay, stay diverse have a little bitcoin have a little cash have a little fluidity have okay. a little uh real estate have a little whatever don't Love put it. eggs in one basket that feels really good that feels really strong yeah, yeah. i've been feeling that intuitively are you done with the dates because you still have to tell us why the 10th and 11th are the good days. Now, the, the 4th through the 8th, are you going to give us four bad days? Or are you going to just, are you actually going to give us that whole period? Well, it's so unpredictable. I can't, I can't tell you. Like, Mars shows yeah. up early, you know? Yeah. And so I, I don't want to, I want, yeah, I want to give myself some. You're you're gonna say, <laughs> Caution, problematic time, swamp area, the 4th through the 8th. Got it. Your words through the three gates. Is it necessary? Is it kind? Does it need to be said by me? You know? Yes. Um, and is it necessary? Is it kind? Does it need to be said by me? <laughs> <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> okay. But those are important. I would okay. Say. 10th and 11th. Tell me, tell me some good stuff. Tiffany. All right. So Venus is going to conjunct Pluto. So this is a kiss. Venus will be right by Pluto and it's happening under a first quarter moon in Pisces. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Mercury will sextile Jupiter. 
All right, so the first quarter moon is uh, about focusing on right action. And this Venus conjunct Jupiter, especially with, um, with uh, Venus retrograde and all these eclipses and like the node stuff, I feel like there's, we're going to see some proposals. We're going to get some deep, juicy, karmic love. I feel like that's like soulmate connection. It feels really intimate and deep. It feels really... Um, karmic, it feels like opportunity knocks. Um, it doesn't have to just be like intimacy. It can be, um, right. you know, kind of it makes powerful changes, you know? Yeah. And, uh, Venus likes it. Venus is like, you sure can buy me that spa day. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the end result of it is harmony and ple like Venus type energy, like you were bringing up before, open hearted um, pl pleasures and yeah, earthy, beautiful. Yeah, so there's that energy. There's the Pluto that is changing everything to make it awesome. There's that first quarter moon saying, now is the time. You're, I'm giving you a yes from the universe. Mercury is sextiling Jupiter, broadcasting your thoughts. What you think about expands. As you, you know? say this, I'm like relationship karma changing. And it just feel like completion. Like when you say that, I'm like relationship karma changing. Because mm -hmm. it just the whole thing just feels it feels big. It does feel big. And it's right after that eclipse. So some of us are going to be like, enough is enough. I'm done here. You know, some of us are going to be like, uh, I guess the best tool you could work with if you're going through relationship changes or uh, reconsidering sparks from the past, mm -hmm. what you can do is to really reimagine or imagine what the most um, loving life choice. Does it match your life energy? Right. And so if you can't, if you can't conjure that yourself, you can role play with a friend, right? So I have a friend that will do that sometimes and she'll role play for me and just so that it helps like get me in the, in the mojo, right? Like, yeah, man, yeah. You're awesome. I'm so proud of you. Like that's what the best loving life partner would tell me through that situation, you know? And yeah. so you can, you can kind of conjure some of that, especially on these days, because again, what you think about is broadcasting out into the spirit world and it is expanding. It's being received. It's not, not being received. It's you not, know? not being received. Okay. Right. So be aware that we've got some magnification and some opportunity at that time, yeah. the 10th and 11th. Okay. Not yeah. only like just good things might be coming in, especially relationally, but also that what we put out will be magnified magnetized and have more more mojo exactly and okay. it feels like a, yes it feels like a sign from the universe Great. i'm going to give you a small personal short story about that so um i i didn't name my daughter until she was three months old okay. and this was very disturbing for a lot of people but it was very normal for me um <laughs> you know you're not you don't know until you know and then you know and so we we made a decision we were in agreement and i said i would really like at least one sign from the universe we've waited so long now i've confused myself we went out to eat and in at, we, this was a place we'd never been before the place next door was um a grill that had part of the name it, it was two names this side of the neon sign was dead black and this side was flashing neon sign my daughter's name <laughs> can, can, are you okay with sharing it or not her name oh. Her name's Callie. It was the Texas Callie grill. And so oh, Callie dude, that's so funny when you see that. So it's Kelly, 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 Kelly. Oh right. my God, that's, so <laughs> that's such a great story to be. You wanted a sign and you got a sign. And that's the energy. It was a broken sign that was working better because it was broken. That's so great. <laughs> and she's a perfect Kelly, you know. I wanted to spell it Kelly, the goddess yes. energy. And yeah. he wasn't having that. So she's not, she's spelled like very typical Western girl spelling, right? But yeah. she, uh, but she's absolutely no other name. And yes. it was for sure right. And I wanted a yes from the universe. And that's the energy available to you on December 10th and 11th, right? <laughs> oh, I love that story. Thanks so much for sharing. Okay. Is there any other, uh, any dates after the 24th or we go to Tarot or do you have more Let's dates? Tarot because, um, you know, you're just it's just a it's just kind of a choppy month so uh, you don't other see anything special at the end except for of course uh, the numerology of just switching into a new year and all that it always feels to me like there's this big building of energy as we come into a new year and of course 2022 and you know what in this birthday i'm coming into my 22 life cycle my sacral sacral energy in the 2022 year it's like all of it's pointing to this feminine 
thing that's happening in my life finally <laughs> um, but i got my little dog and i want to share him with you i'm gonna go get him while you shuffle the cards okay i will be right back i got a squeaky chair here Let's okay see. perfect Cody, come here. So i'm just clearing the deck while we're asking for divine guidance for december of 2021 he was napping, so I don't know how awake he is here. But <laughs> oh my gosh, little fluffy dog! All right, two cards fell out right when you got here, Bodie. <laughs> <laughs> these are both cards. So are these two for the first half of the month, or are these the two cards for? Let's the month? do it for the first half because okay. I was asking for the first half. Okay. All right, so we get the King of Wands, and I told you guys that we were going to be walking through a doorway of fire, didn't I? Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The drums on fire. We're walking. We're marching through it. We're uh, we're having confidence, even though it looks a little fiery out there. We're able to go forward, anyways. You know, so first half of the month, going forward through the fire, anyways. Um, the two of pentacles reversed to me. It speaks to that confusion. It speaks to that. I don't know what decision to make. It doesn't feel clear to me yet. And so uh, that also really does match the astrology. So it's like we're going forward. But we're going to be really cautious about it. And we're going to be present, you know. And we're going to be, we're being in the moment this we're month. Being More here. than ever. We're going to keep reminding ourselves, being in the moment. No That's rush that. to finish the year or to, you know, just, just being in the moment. Right. And, and really acknowledging that everybody has a, is fighting a battle that they're not publishing on social media, right? Like everybody's going through something. And so <laughs> I actually just shared my this last video, this last video, I shared my COVID, a little bit of my COVID battle and my hip surgery story. and this year. Wow. And thank yeah. you guys for all your beautiful well wishes. I yeah. so appreciate you so much. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. So for the second half of the year, what is it that we need to, I mean, December, what, for the second half of December, where there's a turning point, what can anchor us? with the wisdom of the tarot for all of the audience watching something that really speaks to their them at the soul level here all right we get the emperor reversed and so the emperor upright this would be uh, a lot of times it's associated with your career or your boss but this can also be you know becoming the boss of yourself you know this can also be that gemini full moon when we let go of things that just aren't working you know, this can be a time, a completion cycle with uh, something to do with your work. It doesn't mean that you, we all have to quit what we're doing or pivot every single thing. But uh, for me, for example, do I have to do all of my admin all the time or am I willing to let go of a piece and, and get some help? Mm -hmm. uh, that could, it could be simple like that. But that's one interpretation. Do you have uh, something to add? I am so in that energy. <laughs> well, I, in general, I, you know, I, I never know what to do with the reverses because sometimes they seem to apply almost, almost like I need the whole spread. So with the individual ones, but for me, it is, I'm feeling what you're saying. I really am. It's, I'm not trying to not add anything, but I'm really feeling in my own life. It's like in that Capricorn energy you were talking about, um, I really want to check and see what is it that I, was it Capricorn that we were talking about? I just remember you're saying it, when we get solid, I want to, because the emperor to me is so Capricorn. It's such a, mm -hmm. a solid masculine, the, the, the mountain and the mountain climber, you know, solid masculine energy. And that's, I would love to end this year on that, you know, my own mm -hmm. clarity around that and not on the craziness of Gemini. So I'd like to, so maybe if I let the Gemini get to me, I'm going to have my emperor's going to be wonky, you know, but I believe we can, that can be upright if we are, um, like that's a good reminder, in other words, as a single card that it could go either way because of Gemini. And mm -hmm. and I and I'm glad we're doing this because I feel like I'm gonna make some big decisions maybe around my business and around what I'm doing and just like you said, the admin stuff and all that. So. Right. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're, we have our team meeting. Our, we have Wise Guys Collective has our team end of the year meeting, mm -hmm. and we're going to redistribute some of the effort. You know. Yeah. It, uh, and so that way I can feel lighter and everybody is, feels like a great team. I have a great team, awesome team. And now we're just going to redistribute some of the tasks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way you can be looking at it. And it, if it's bigger, if it's heavier, if it's hitting your chart more directly, right, this can, this can actually be walking away from a situation that you had given your power to, you know, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a, but you know, it, it's still the same standing in your own, standing in your own emperor, standing in your own emperor. So sweetie, I think, I don't know how long we've gone, but we've gone pretty deep and <laughs> that's probably good for the year. Let's talk about getting together to do one, just a general one for 2022, because I'm really curious about what's coming up and how you see it. And uh, ah, do you have any last thing you want to add before we go or? Um, no, the being here now is going to be so healing to yourself, to your community. Um, there are, there's a division, right? Gemini full moon. There's a division of thoughts, of belief systems. Uh, things are changing locationally for us. And so our, it's not that it's us versus them. It's not the North versus the South. It's not the East versus the West. It's own homes that have different ways of thinking. And so your alliances, like we've been talking about alliances changing all year, your alliances, the people that you connect to, the people that you respect, that you want to be around are maybe more online, you know? So looking for that connection in that uh, very Aquarian way of these online communities, I think is going to be a fun way to also end your year. So if you have some courses you wanted to take. If you or you just said Aquarian, you said Aquarian online communities, that's circling space, you guys. That is exactly. space. It's totally designed for that, you know? Exactly. And, and literally learning the Aquarian way is kind of what circling space is about coming and being totally ourselves together harmonizing more because of our differences not less so mm -hmm. thank you for that yeah and, um thank you for all of this and we'll hopefully guys uh again both tiffany and I are looking at our schedules and stuff but i think we can make it work so you'll see us for the 2022 and bodhi's is doing his little teething puppy thing on me here so <laughs> it's time yes. to say goodbye thank you tiffany thank you everyone for watching much love. Bye for Thank now.